commissioners to order Monday, February 7th, noting that the president largely is in the council chambers along with the auditor. And uh, we have Mr. Burton on uh, WebEx uh, that will constitute a quorum. We're still under a state emergency protocol according to the governor for March the 4th. So we do have quorum. And if Mr. Uh, Mallory joins us, potentially by uh, in presence, then we'll uh, note that at the appropriate time. If you would uh, stand with me, I will uh, lead in a prayer and Mr. Sadoff, our county administrator, will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, as we come to you this morning, we pray that you will not only warm our hearts, but warm our, uh, our spirits to uh, the things that need to be done that are most important in your sight to seek you and your love and your grace, your tender mercy that endures forever. We pray this day, Father, that you will give us wisdom as we do the things. We also pray, Lord, that you will uh, guide Grant County in the days ahead. We pray in your precious name. Amen. If you join me, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one under God. Thank you. Be seated. First item up on our uh, business is that of current claims minutes payroll. With regard to the claims, there were three, excuse me, four uh, individual pre approvals that were uh, issued. 120, uh, 22 for visa in the amount of $25, 121 of 22, Centerpoint Energy in the amount of $191.03, and Indiana, Michigan Power in the amount of $2,012.18. One on uh, the 26th of this, this past uh, month in the amount of $565.28 card membership services. Uh, one on 128 of uh, this year, Family Service Society Incorporated, $1,775.81. Those are the individual pre-approvals. And then we have two other batches of invoice edit reports that were pre -approved. Uh, that would be uh, for 124 of 22, general amount $148,002.61, batch $11,136.46, highway batch $69,663.05 for a grand total of $228,802.12. The uh, other invoice edit report approvals, pre-approvals were on 131 of 22. General batch was $56,836.55. Other batch, $23,721.98. Highway batch, $3,700.84 for a grand total of $84,259. 37 cents. That uh, would be all of our pre approvals. We would need a motion to ratify uh, the pre approval. Uh, motion to ratify. Motion to ratify from Mr. Burton via WebEx. I will second that motion. Mike, do you have any discussion on those items? No. Hearing none, all those in favor would say aye. 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 One uh, aye from Mr. Burton on WebEx, one from in-house. Uh, it is carried. Uh, with regard to those invoice edit reports scheduled to be paid today, 2-7 uh, of 2022, uh, general batch would be $275,190.48. Other batch, $33,099.23. Highway batch $2,097.40 for a grand total of 
387,000, excuse me, $387.11. Um, would need a motion to pay these bills. A motion to pay the bills mentioned. I will second that. We had a motion, Mike Burton via WebEx, and uh, Mark Bursley seconded that. Any discussion, Mike? No. Hearing none, all those in favor would say aye. 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 I have an aye from Mr. Burton on WebEx and uh, one from Mr. Bardsley in house. Uh, it is carried. Uh, just for those who are wondering why I keep talking about WebEx, we have to uh, denote according to uh, the rules and procedures that the governor's laid out in the future. If we're doing uh, business online, we have to make sure that we uh, declare a vote that's coming across the uh, the internet. All right, the other item that we have here besides claims is payroll. Uh, we have two approvals, pre-approvals on payroll number two and payroll number three. Payroll number two pre-approval was given on January the 18th in the amount of $553,138.48 and uh, the uh, payroll number three pre-approval was given February 1st in the amount of $550,996.93. Uh, I would need a motion to approve, excuse me, to ratify the pre-approvals on payroll two and three. A motion to ratify the pre-approval on payrolls number two and three. I will second that. Any discussion? Again, a point of clarification, that was the gross amount of the ground. Yes. All right, uh, all those in favor of uh, the pre ratification of pre-approvals would say aye. 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 That's an aye from Mr. Burton on the WebEx and uh, one from Mr. Bartsley in-house, and it is carried. I believe that covers our pre-approvals and our claims, is that correct? So, all right. Next up, we have the uh, receipt of the monthly report of the uh, Court of Courts, month ending 12, 31 of 21. And uh, we also have the receipt of the monthly report weights and measures, 12, 16 of 21 to 1, 15 of 22. And uh, with your common consent, Mike, we will receive those. Yes. By consent, we have received both those reports. All right, we go to communication and board updates. Uh, Mr. Auditor, what do uh, we need to be updated on? Well, I believe I'm going to say nothing from my office to be updated on this time, unless you pass to the next one. Thank All you. right. Uh, do we have EMA in the house? EMA is not in the house. All right. Uh, Kevin, you're up in just a little bit, so we won't hear from you right now. Any other boards or special committees? Hearing none, we will move on. Marcus, IT report. Um, uh, this gentleman, no, um, we have uh, got the uh, RFP. Uh, last time uh, for uh, refreshing our data centers and uh, modernizing our uh, network infrastructure. Um, I have gotten uh, two uh, different RFPs. I received one from uh, Presidio. And I have received one from uh, the uh, DNS group, which is uh, based out of uh, Chicago, Illinois. So, and like I said, I haven't looked at anything in them, so I, I'm not sure what the... You so know. you're not ready to make a recommendation, just reporting them? No, them. so right now, this is just basically announced, hey, we got these two right now. So I believe the next couple of weeks, uh, I, uh, me and uh, Brian will go through and we'll evaluate them, and then we'll come back and... 
this is just kind of the announcement saying, hey, we received these two within the time frame. Right. And so this is technically the bid open. Yeah, correct. <clears throat> Do you have our numbers? The the what? Do you have the numbers from each one? Bottom line. Oh, the bottom line. Uh, let's see here. It looks like uh, the DNS group. Theirs is looking like. Uh, Three hundred Yeah, it's looking like they got theirs kind of broke down a little bit more. Let's see if I can find a here. Yeah, um, it looks like Presidio's, theirs is uh, 455308 $8.14. So basically what you're asking, we're going to take this under advisement so that you can compare every apple to apple. And right, because with the, the RFP process, we basically go through and we grade it. And then they'll each get a score, and then from there we'll make a recommendation on that. Very good. So, I mean, that's pretty much it. That's all I got. And you're not asking for money yet? No, uh -uh. like I said, we're, we're powering up right now. Yeah, this yeah. is the second month of the new year. You <laughs> yeah. still haven't asked for money, so I can see you're stacking oh, yeah. it up. Right. Oh, yeah. And you hear those numbers he doesn't budget. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he put down his budget, right? Well, hopefully he did. Yeah. <laughs> How much had you set aside? Well, like I said, because we. Uh, Normally, with our monies, we, we have a lease for our storage. So that lease is gone because we paid it off last year. So we're going to have to get another lease for all this equipment. All right. So basically, we're just taking funds, what we normally use for the other thing, and put towards this. So. Totally out of uh, left field, but uh, did we have any uh it computer damage at all with the uh problems that we had at the uh courthouse i think there's like a couple scanners and things like that but i mean none of our computers were damaged no nope. good nope nope and copiers and stuff were fine too all right mike any questions for it this morning no Thank you for your time today, Mark. Yep, hey, no problem. Thanks again, gentlemen. Mike, with uh, your permission on any uh, items that we have approved, can we use your uh, signature stamp to uh, validate the uh, material? Yes. Thank you, sir. We will go on to the uh, highway report. I see Tony Smith is with us. morning. I've just got a, a few things. Um, first off, Bridge 39, which is the bridge we've got out on 1000 East, has been closed for almost two, two years now. Um, we've got two bids last week or last the last meeting, and Hoosier Pride was the low bid of $607,768.25. That is a community crossing agreement. So we got a half. So now I just need um, a signature from you guys accepting that. Is this the uh, contract with the state? Or with no, the, this uh, is just the acceptance of uh, hiring a contract. Okay, so we'll have a contract with the state here uh, probably in a couple weeks. All right, Mike, I do have before me a proposal and acceptance form. Uh, the bridge replacement project, as mentioned, uh, bridge number 39, uh, County Road 1000 East over Black Creek. Uh, and it is an acceptance to uh, 
award Hoosier Pride excavating that contract. And uh, we would be paying half, since this is a community correction, uh, community corrections, community uh, crossroads uh, grant. I would need a motion to uh, execute this uh, agreement. So moved. Motion uh, from Mr. Burton uh, via WebEx, and I will second that. Any other questions that you would have? As always, uh, I just want to make sure our we're going to take this out of Kim Capital. Where do we usually Correct. take this? Correct. Come out of Kim Bridge. Okay. Yep. All right. We have no further questions. All those in favor would say aye. 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 And uh, that was aye from WebEx, Mr. Burton, and Mr. Bartley in the house. Uh, it is carried, and we will sign this. Looks like we need all all of our signatures, Mike, so uh, we'll use your stamp on this one again. Okay. Okay. The second thing I've got is. Um, the end of January, we had put in for community crossing grant uh, round one of 2022. And what we have submitted to the state is uh, a replacement of Bridge 789, which is over on 10th Street, um, off of Nebraska. And then we, all, we have also put in for uh, chips, our chip sale program. And we are requesting a million dollars from the state on those two projects. And uh, help me again, Tony. Are we? Uh, are we? Uh, you asking us to give you permission to proceed? I'm just letting you, you. We've already got the financial commitment letter from you guys and the council. I'm just just updating you that we did um, put in for the green. All right. That's great. Thank you. Um, and then the one that I really don't want to bring up is uh, snow. Uh, we worked 10 hours Thursday, 12 hours Friday, and six hours yesterday. Um, we did not work Saturday because it was cold. We didn't think it was going to do any good. Uh, but we went out yesterday with the sun shining and the temperatures up above freezing and made really good progress and uh, the time we were out and we're back out today. Um, also, still cleaning up from that mess. We're uh, very fortunate you guys did a great job, and we didn't get any of the freezing rain like some areas did, so we're, we were grateful for that too. Yes, very much so. Uh, David also wanted me to bring up and let you know that we did uh, talk to the council about uh, raises for the employees. And then February 22nd, United would like to bring their present the bridge um, inspection report. That's a Tuesday, right? Because yeah, of, because of the holiday. Because of the holiday on the first day of February. Last thing is clearing the snow from around the complex and the courthouse. Uh, we'd really like to do that either on an evening or Saturday. Wet it around about backing over somebody with a, with a loader. Um, so if you have a preference on an evening or Saturday. I prefer evening before Saturday. Okay. <laughs> Simply because I, I know that we've got congestion out there trying to do the COVID tests and bringing people in so sooner the better. Okay. Well, we've got one loader waiting on a blade for so and that's supposed to be here tomorrow I think so maybe Wednesday or Thursday we can get up here and get rid of all this mm -hmm. snow and I've contacted the city and, and we can dump it down there about a building and get rid of it there so that's all I have. Very good thank you. Uh, Mike any questions for Tony? No. Thank you, Tony. You're welcome. Uh, and again, would you give our thanks to the crews that uh, worked their tails 
off this path we can. Appreciate it very much. All right, we're going to uh, old business. Kevin Hicks, our uh, dispatch director, has uh, information for us. Good morning. Sure. Um, at request at the last meeting, I uh, added the expiration of um, December 31st, 2024, to the contract with the Marion Hospital, Marion General Hospital. Um, for EMD medical director, and I've also added the clause at the end of it as well. So I would like to proceed forward with that if at all possible. Um, do we have a clean copy of that now, or you should have? I thought I emailed it to Justin. I, I yeah, I don't. I don't see it in the packet, so I don't have one. And this has already gone past our attorney. Yes, it was approved before we brought it the first time. Okay. Signed. Okay. So, Mike, what we've got is this is the uh, agreement with Marion uh, Health that uh, they will be providing for us services for the uh, medical director. We have to have a uh, medical doctor who supervises uh, basically our uh, dispatchers with regard to the medical uh, emergency dispatch. Uh, is that correct? Yes. Yeah, they just like the EMS. We have to have a medical director as well. So uh, we've gone through that. We've got the initial uh, agreements that we asked for, and uh, we do have a uh, renewal date, December twenty first of twenty twenty four. December thirty first. Excuse me, December thirty first, twenty twenty four. Since we've gone through the uh, basic approval process, shall we move? on with consent and uh, have this uh, document signed. Maybe I talk too much there, Mike. Should we just uh, go ahead by consent and agree to, to this document? Yes. Thank you, sir. By consent, we're ready to sign off on that. All right. Thank you so much. And I also would like to thank the maintenance department for all their work and keeping our building Vince did a wonderful job with the store. Thank you. Uh, just as, as a uh, follow up, uh, Kevin, how busy were you during the actual snow event through uh, in the dispatch center? Surprisingly, the residents of the city and the county behaved themselves. Um, we really didn't have too many hassles. So they, they did very well at, at staying home and staying put. Thank so you. My thanks to them as well. Yes, that's, that's, that's good news because, yeah. you know, there are times where we do not heed the emergency warnings that continue to come our way and we pay for it. So folks have, have paid attention and done yes. a great job. Yes. yes, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Brad Driver wants to uh, do follow up with us for the courthouse repair, uh, repair proposal. I see, see Brad is in the room. Senior project developer for Amoresco. Um, I have copies here um, for you guys of the follow up. Um, Jim as well. Um, these were some documents that I had sent over. Um, so, as you know, we went in front of the council, um, as, as you guys had asked us to last month and um, went through what what we were proposing to correct the moisture intrusion over at the courthouse. Um, there was some questions that came up from one of the council members that, that night, um, and that's what these documents that I'm passing out to you are to address. Um, one of his questions was he wanted to know what kind of, what size of pipe we were using. So the pictures that you have there that are stapled together, there's three copies. Um, as I explained to him that, that we were into what we call SD drawings, um, and those are um, those are basically design drawings of, of what we call schematic drawings of, of trying to prepare things. Um, at this point of the project, because we are not under contract with you guys at this time, once we would get under contract, that's when we would then move into our construction documents. 
that are ready for construction as well as permitting processes. So, um, so what we what we did here is I went back in and, and tried to show what size of pipe we are using at different locations, the different structures um, that have been asked by the city for us to to install on this project instead of just running everything just pipe and hooking pieces together without having the ability above ground to go back in and run cameras or, or clean anything out in the future. Um, and so. Uh, shown on page one on page two and three um, I tried to show uh, a little bit about additional pipe sizes of, of the yellow represents the the footer drains that we would install down at the footer of the, of, of the foundation um, again showing there's some crosshatch little squares those are representations of the surface inlets that we would have that we described in our proposal to everyone um, and then they'll, they'll, all those then tie into the structure numbers. And so I did that on the east and west sides of the courthouse um, just to be able to show and explain to people what, what that was. Um, we then went back, um, as you are aware, um, that, that the council member had brought up um, something called, um, uh, what was it? He, Called, oh, the flow, flowable fill that, that, that he asked, um, you know, why, why couldn't you use flowable fill instead of building, um, you know, the one-sided wall and the process that we explained. Um, and so we, we met with our structural engineer who had designed the project, who had come up here when we had the, um, the, the whole site open and everything. Um, and so what this report is basically explaining um, what, the, what the summary of the existing conditions were again. Um, the summary of the alternate solution proposed by the council member um, and then we just kind of basically go through and, and highlight you know what that what that uh, flowable fill is what it's used for um, and then the science behind it of that it's not adequate to do what we're trying to accomplish for waterproofing um, and so basically um, you know this document goes on and shows Again, some of our SD drawings um, of the foundation detail of what we would be doing down there, um, as well as then there's pictures from when we did the exploration of, of, of the sidewall. So, um, so I just feel like that uh, we you know we've kind of addressed that. I don't know how how you guys want want to move forward um, with that at this time. Um, if we would maybe uh, meet with the council president and maybe the council member that raised these questions individually um, to kind of have that discussion. Um, I, I also offered up in that email um, when, where I attached these documents that we would very much like to come and present as a joint session to the commissioners and the council at their council meeting and kind of show you guys the data that Amoresco has done through the years with your capital assets of what you have asked us to go back through and look at buildings that we could at least um, to date, I believe the last time our information was updated was probably 2018, but we could show you through 2018 what your facility cost index would be for, I believe, the buildings that you would be interested in, uh, of, of knowing that was a question I believe that the council president had asked. Um, and so with a little bit of work before that meeting, we could actually probably get you some updated information even um, through 2021 of what you guys have done since 2018 to some of your buildings. I know especially over at the Saving Bank, um, and we could give you guys more of an idea of, of where, where those buildings are right, right now. Um, I, I, I like the idea of us sitting down with the president and especially the, uh, the member that uh, had asked about that, that fill. And uh, I think we'll have to get that information to them. I think they'll want to chew, up, chew on it some more at their next council meeting anyway, but uh, at least by uh, a sit down and, and updating them, they'll have a better understanding of where we, we need to go before they get into the meeting. Okay. Uh, and that is... Next week, the 16th is the next one. It's next week. We'll have to uh, see if Shane and, and uh, Chuck can meet with us toward the end of this week or very beginning of next. Okay. Okay. Would you uh, um, want us to 
uh, prepare something for your your building conditions from the data that we currently have in the database right now um, to be able to present that to to them and show them that tool that I had had talked about last time during the uh, during the council meeting. I, I I don't think there's anything wrong with us showing what's available. Okay. Because they they seem to be quite interested in it. Right. Right. And at least that can give them an an idea about about what what's going on. Right. And to be able to see where they go from there then, right? So act, just actually I'll be working on the agenda and maybe uh, tomorrow actually. So if we want this on the agenda for next week's meeting we probably need to get something ready uh, for that. We had talked about that. Yes. I'll get okay. you a letter. Pretty okay. much we've got okay. courthouse issue and ARP. Okay. That's, that's our two issues. So. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. That'll be fine. Any other questions for me at this time? I mean I know you I know this may be new for some of you to see some of this data, but um, and I can go ahead and um, forward this electronically to uh, Commissioner Burton and to um, Commissioner Mal Mallory, um, and I can go ahead and get get that to them then. Um, that would, that would so, be helpful. So they'll have that information in front of them as well then. Mike, do you have any questions uh, from your side of the things? No. All right, uh, we'll we'll get a a, a copy electronically to you and if we need hard copy uh, as well we'll get that to you okay would you want to send it electronically to the council members too right now i mean that'd be a good idea i think just so they have it as well do you want do you want to forward that that's that information garen sent over back yeah. at the end of january yeah so, so you, you you've got that document so yep. i think you can go ahead and send that that was that, that's sufficient okay all right all right i appreciate it Tom. thank you brad appreciate thank you. it all right all right that concludes, I believe, our old business. Mike, are you aware of any other old business? No. All right, thank you. We will go to new business. Uh, Melissa Stevenson is with us, Correctional Services. Good morning. Good morning. Um, so back in December, um, the commissioners uh, voted unanimously for a favorable recommendation for pretrial services grant. At that time, we hadn't received any information about the grant, just that we were anticipating receiving it. We had received it for several years. Um, then we were notified that they'd kind of made some reductions in that grant in and of itself. So I wanted to give you some updates about what that is. Okay. Um, so we were given notification by the Indiana Office of Court Services that the grant request for the current funding cycle had to be reprioritized due to the demand of the relative amount of funds available. So we have in our um, our request is three full-time staff and that's a probation officer stipend and then we have some um, contract work for uh, public defenders. And so what the Indiana Office Court Services did is the existing staff salaries were preserved um, but they put a cap on the fringe benefits at 30 percent um, so it created a, a deficit of about $52,865 um, to cover the remaining fringe benefits of the three probation officers um, and then a little bit for the uh, stipend that goes for the coordinator as well. Um, that Those are all being paid out of this pretrial grant. So after we were doing some consulting with Angie and Jim and Justin, um, we uh, are coming to let you know that the, the benefits are generally appropriated from the commissioner's budget. Um, and uh, the commissioner's budget appropriation um, for the benefits is paid out of uh, the general fund money. Um, and kind of in, in talking with them, there uh, is enough money to cover those. Um, so we wanted to, you know, operate and um, hold transparency and let you know about those uh, funds that. Uh, that the grant doesn't cover. Yeah, because you were originally wanting an additional appropriation from the council to cover what those costs were. Right. And looking at that, there's enough appropriation to handle it without additional appropriation provided the council still wants to fund those. So you know, my thought is you need to ask the council, okay, we're being reduced this much. So if we still want to approve those positions, understand the general fund's going to pay X dollars to cover that. That's, that's what we're doing. So we're all on board. 
over there. You have to do it with Andy and all that. I think so. Okay. It, all right. It's been a new poll. We've okay. never had to yeah. do anything like that before. So. Yeah, because we don't need an additional appropriation as long as the council says yes. We're, we're going to give other positions using general fund dollars, you know, those fringe benefits. So as long as they're okay with that, that's fine. So you're going to be on the agenda for next week's meeting, right? Okay. Actually, Correctional Services have been taking the request even though we have been paying it out. Yeah, what we do is the, the general fund appropriation for fringe benefits, the FICA, the PERC, and so forth, is part of the commissioner's budget. So other departments have their money being paid out of that department. Yeah. So in this case, if we use general fund dollars to fund those, it would come out of that part of the budget the commissioner's section. So I'd say it'd be more them requesting it. We just, we just pay it out of yours where it's all put together. Instead of having 15 different places, it's all there in one spot. So. Well, I heard the word stipends too. Is uh, $1,500 a year. Department. Yes. Okay. okay. But what happens is that uh, they only pay 30% of the fringe benefits of that 15%. I mean, it's a very, very small amount of money. But that includes the amount. Bottom line is what the council be able to understand and set is that if we continue funding all those positions that have been part of the program, the fringe benefit dollars will have to be paid by the county out of their general fund. So that's that's what they have to approve. With your budget, I wanted to make sure you were aware of those before we went to the council. Appreciate that. Mike, do you have any questions on the, the, the changes that are coming with this grant? No. Okay. They consider it probably an ongoing thing, too. You never know. I know you don't have a crystal ball, but you consider that they'll probably keep it reduced succeeding year as well. Or... Yeah, so one thing that I know about this year is we don't know what they're going to do next year. So they didn't tell us that they were making um, any anticipated reductions. Um, and so that was quite a surprise for us when we, we saw that. When we looked at other counties to see what they were doing, they're all kind of in this limbo. We don't know what we're going to do um, as well. I also know that we didn't get cut as bad as some of the other counties. I, I can just see the council asking, well, is this going to be an ongoing thing or is this? I think it's realistic to anticipate that they're going to ask uh, local jurisdictions to start picking up a portion of like they did this year. I think that's probably reasonable for us to expect that. There is a trend right now of, again, shifting uh, revenue collection and disbursement, pushing it back to the local level so that the state can say we cut your taxes. It's, it's coming in different different venues so corrections health it's it's coming uh, we just need to be prepared and pre-think that of course that the question becomes do you accept that can we can you afford to fund it on, on an ongoing basis that's what you have to decide yeah. and i can tell you that if, if we know it ahead of our budget cycle we'll make sure that you guys know that too as well thank you very much any questions i think we've covered it okay thank thanks you. oh the sheriff is in the house. Yes, sir. How are you feeling, sir? You back up? Oh, uh, yes, at yes, I am back up at it, hundred percent, ready to take in the world. Uh, Want to say good morning, happy Monday to everybody, to the citizens of the county visitors that are here today, and also thank you, Mr. Hicks, for announcing the May work crew for cleaning up the central dispatch. Matter of fact, we clean up Grand County by utilizing the May work crew. So. That's one of the goals that we like to do. Instead of just sitting there, get them out, get them working. I'm not ready for all. <laughs> all right, well, good morning. I'd like to pass out a couple things here. Okay, well, thank you, sir. And uh, as I stated, uh, we are in the process of contracting our kitchen service out. Uh, we have, a, a, at this uh, time, five employees. Out of that five, uh, two retired. Uh, we got one that's scheduled to leave Sunday, and we have one that's going to leave next Thursday, I believe. 
which we will be short of manpower. And so this was an opportunity for us to go with this company in which we explored this company uh, approximately three years ago. Uh, however, and we should have took care of this three years ago, but we had a couple of them that uh, scheduled to uh, retire that had over 20 years of service. And we did not want to mess up their purse. You know, purse. Now they are retired. And with those that are resigning, then we have no choice. Now, this proposal that we have in front of you guys is a company uh, called Tiger. Uh, we are very familiar with them. They currently have our commissary business, in which uh, we are very, very pleased with them. Uh, since uh, uh, we've been partnering with them, I think, for seven years, going on yeah, seven years, uh, we have generated a lot of money in our commissary, which you guys are probably aware of that. So this is a win-win for not only the Sheriff's Department, but also Grant County. It will eliminate five positions uh, uh, off the uh, payroll, in which I know the county council will enjoy that, and also the benefit package, which is also important. If I'm correct, uh, Mr. Work, right? Could be. Yes, it could be. Or I'm not sure. Be. I'm not sure what, how we run all those. Okay. You're right. Yeah, they, they all went there. So make a long story short, this uh, proposal would also save Grant County approximately over $72,000. Now, our county attorney has this uh, been emailed back and forth with their attorney. There's some little small issues, and one of the small issues is that uh, we want to make sure that the commissioners in the past deal with a uh, contract that we are all happy. And so we're going back and forth as we speak. However, you have a proposal in front of you, and we would like for you guys to look at it. And if you guys feel good about it, the county uh, attorney feel good about it, I think it's be a win-win for us all. So we are here to have my chief deputy present. If you guys have any questions for us, we are willing to answer those. I think that uh, we had discussed it just briefly, uh, Chief Deputy and I last last week. Uh, looked like it was going to cost more, but then we see the savings uh, on the back end yes. uh, as as we develop the contract. What what about? Um, um, I spoke to the council president, uh, Mr. Shane Millsworth. He's been informed, and uh, he would like for me to come in front of the council to explain to the whole body. But he was in favor. But as I explained to him, I need to get the green light from the commissioners for uh, the continuing. And from the council standpoint, it sounds could probably be a transfer of appropriations from the personnel correct salary there to a contractual service area. So, yes, I believe so. How do you like to, or how would the council like to do that? This is the first I've heard of that'd be my initial reaction okay. to be a transfer okay. appropriation. Yeah, she and I have not talked about this yet. So as, as we stated, it it would be a win win for Grant County. We will be uh, talking with our attorney this afternoon, but uh, do you know where our sticking points are right now that uh, we're having problems with it? Uh, we had a clause in there on identification, okay. and they totally took it out, and he would prefer that it be a mutual, same wording for both of them, so that needs has back in. Uh, the only other sticking point he had was the automatic renewal, which we got that taken care of this morning, so that's been changed to uh, identification. <laughs> yeah, that word that needs to be a mutual thing or Right now, there's none, none in there at all. Yeah. I mean, in, in some ways, our backs are up against the wall with the loss of our manpower, and there's no way we can get trained, prepared people to move just exactly. right into to that position. So, uh, this absolutely makes sense. Uh, Mike, do you feel? Uh, comfortable with us approving this uh, once we have the approval of the uh, attorney to move forward? Yes. All right. Uh, would you mind making that a motion? Okay. So moved. Mr. Mr. Burton just agreed that we want to uh, go into a contractual relationship with Tiger Correctional Food Services and this uh, full food service agreement as presented. Once the uh, Grant County Attorney has given his blessing to it, and I second that. 
All right, so we have the motion via Mr. Burton WebEx, second Mr. Barnsley. Any other discussion, Mike? Pardon? Any other discussion? No. All right, all those in favor would say aye. 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 Uh, one on WebEx, one in-house, and we have uh, agreed to this. Awesome, awesome. We want to thank you guys for doing that. As I stated earlier, it's a win-win for everybody that's involved. And plus, to be quite honest with everyone, it's less headache for us, you know, because they are completely in charge of all of us. Helps us to run more efficiently. We're all in favor of it. Yes, and as you know, we are the biggest cafeteria in Grant County, if you guys did not know. <laughs> you know, <laughs> when you have 300 inmates in there, you're serving three meals a day. You know, that's 900 meals and plus seven days a week that's a lot of meals but there are certain conditions where we you have to get a meal right that that and it's true and all you got to do is commit a crime and come to visit us and i guarantee you we will but it will not be like what you get at home but it, it'll be great but thank you guys and i want to say thank you again sure, sure, sure. 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 just to clarify sure. Just to clarify, are we waiting on a final agreement to come through before this is sent to Kyle? Well, we're going to send it back to him a third time and make sure everything is green. Okay. You know, okay. for green light on. on uh, we will send you a right. A copy right. Okay. For everybody. Thank you. Hey, Sheriff, are you going to look on me on the agenda for next week's meeting? Is that your plan? Uh, yes. Yes. So you're going to get us a letter for the council there. Yes. Yes. Sir. Thank you. All right. Next up under new business, Justin Sagoff, our administrator, for reference to UMR administrative service. Uh, so this agreement is essentially something that you've already been submitted to agree upon. This is just the official signing. Uh, it's not in the old package. Um, so I have the original here. So this is a uh, paperwork we need to sign that we've already approved since we're uh, under the UMR agreement now. That's right. right. It's real easy, Mike. They only want my signature, so I'll just do that real quick. Good. Thank you, sir. All right. Last but not least, under new business, uh, I think Todd, is that you? We have a follow-up on yes, sir. number number eleven. Yeah, we we've got um, claim package number eleven, um, which has retention a retention um, payment for MPX solutions for the towers for $13,552.40. Um, the towers are 100% complete. This is really just to kind of satisfy uh, Nello for, uh, so they don't charge us a storage fee. We're holding the, the towers in South Bend until we get all of our power up and going and um, we're ready for delivery. We can't stack them until I get power to light them. So um, on that front, we've got power on two of the sites. Um, the third site I was by there last week before the storm and they had the utilities marked. They had their flags for their path in, but still no trench from AES. So um, or AEP. Um, so who knows at this point when that's going to get done. But uh, we did get a uh, another shelter delivered uh, a week ago from Friday. So I've got two shelters there. Third shelter was scheduled to come this week, uh, but it uh, that may, there may be a delay on that. And then I've got a um, pyramid uh, funding for some reimbursables, uh, one thousand two hundred fifty-eight dollars and 49 cents totaling fourteen thousand eight hundred ten dollars and sixty nine cents uh, this uh, particular MPX um, payment that does not uh, finish things out or that that does finish things out that that finishes things out for the material so just for the steel on the tower we've still has 
I have the MPX contract for this tower labor, uh, which we won't bill and obviously until uh, the towers get delivered and we stack those. And that I was telling Justin last week that that's a pretty quick process. It takes them a couple of days uh, to build one of these and then a third day to stack them. So uh, that's a couple of weeks worth of work uh, to get these all done. All right. So we have uh, this uh, payment request packet number 11, uh, paying out MPX uh, solutions $13,552.40. And uh, the request for pyramid architecture engineering professional services at twelve hundred fifty eight dollars twenty nine cents for a grand total of fourteen thousand eight hundred ten dollars and sixty four cents. Um, at this point, we are uh, ready to pay that out. Uh, I don't think anything's holding that back, correct? Correct. correct. I would entertain a motion to uh, pay packet 11 payment request as presented. A uh, motion to approve payment request as presented. I will second that. Mr. Burton made the motion on WebEx and I uh, second it. Any other discussion or questions on that, Mike? No. All right, hearing none, all those in favor would say aye. 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 Uh, Mr. Burton uh, voted aye on WebEx. I voted aye in-house. It is carried. Thank you uh, very much. Bob, do you have any idea when the weather is going to break and we're going to get some uh, movement? Uh, no, you're not going to get my. Uh, uh, you're not going to get my predictions. We might have Kevin chime in a little bit on on his weather predictions, but. Uh, since Although you're a meteorologist, you could probably do better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a 50 50 shot. Uh, we are going to get some falling, though, by the end of the week, hopefully. So. Appreciate your help today. Thank you, sir. All righty. Thank you all. Have a good day. All right. Um, we have been uh, just an item of information in our new business. Actually, it's old business. Uh, Bantering back and forth, we had a reduction in the amount of positivities uh, for the county, but uh, Dr. Moore believes that that is uh, due to the uh, sequestering of us because of the bad weather. So we're still waiting to see if we have any more uh, data that's coming in that we're popping back up with our positivity rates with testing. Uh, we can mandate for uh, our employees and those entering the building. And we want to encourage that uh, process until we get out of the red zone with the state. All right, uh, Mr. Burton, any other new business that you're aware of? Still with us, Mike? Yes. Okay, uh, nothing else that you're aware of under new business? No. All right. Uh, this is the uh, portion of the uh, commissioners uh, meeting where the public can address the Board of Commissioners. Um, we invite you, if you would like to, to acknowledge that online and or in person. We have you come to the podium or raise your hand on uh, the internet. We'll acknowledge you there and present your name, your uh, address, and your concerns or comments for the commissioners. No one online, anyone in the room? Randy Atkins, 8560 South Wheeling Pike, Fairmount, Indiana. Go right ahead, sir. It's my understanding the course that would normally, this is regarded to solar farms in Grand County. It's my understanding the course that would normally occur is the solar application would go before the BZA as a special exception. Is that the course that the Commission of Grant County see occurring in regard to the solar application? 
I can tell you right now, Randy, that we are actually talking with our attorney this afternoon. Uh, we've had some questions regarding the BZA and uh, what it should or should not be doing. And so I can't really answer that question until I get corporate information, but that's going to be discussed this afternoon. And how would that information that you received be disseminated to Grand County residents? Uh, I'd be happy to, uh, to give that to you. Technically, we have to present that in a public forum first. So that would be at a commissioner's meeting, or that would be at a, uh, a meeting with the council to update them on what we've discovered. Okay. <clears throat> it's essential property value guarantees be included in the solar ordinance. <clears throat> the impact of large-scale solar farms on property value information, I believe, is skewed. We must not fall victim to the property value impact after the fact after the ordinance is done. <clears throat> I'm concerned about the setbacks in the ordinance. I believe they're critical to protecting residents and adjoining landowners. Uh, it's my understanding that uh, the current um, draft has a 50-foot setback from roadways and not participating in joint property owners. Uh, I cannot tell you that for sure. The property owner's uh, initial recommendation, I think, was uh, 250 from uh, structure. Uh, I do not recall the, the road, but uh, I'm sure Brian's on. Brian's on. He might be able to give us that information. You with us, Brian? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Can you answer Mr. Atkins' question? Uh, current... The current draft number five has a 1320 setback with a 50 foot setback from property lines. Uh, the original draft was a 250 setback between uh, solar equipment and non participating residents and also a 50 foot setback from property lines. To answer your question, that's roadways, Brian. From so roadways, I believe is 50 foot. I got that hook right here. I would assume that's from the edge. It would be not from the center. Yeah, from from the road is actually 50 foot from the edge of the right of way. And the right of way would be what? Generally about 10 foot off the road, depending on area or location. My concern about that being a farmer and recognizing the impact that cornfields have at intersections and driveways and so forth, it concerns me greatly that 50 foot would not be enough in order to not impair um, motorists or residents pulling out of their driveways if their panels are setting 50 foot from the roadway. Because I personally live on a curb and I know that's very detrimental. In fact, I chop the tops of cornfields out every year in order to provide safety for people coming around the court. Those are my concerns. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Good morning, sir. Uh, Eric Wright, 81 East, 1050 South, Fairmount. And I would just very briefly want to follow up on the solar farms as well, but I would just like to, to remind the, the county commissioners to um, to keep the approval of the solar farms with the BCA with spatial, special exception and to approve the uh, ordinance amendments. Um, most counties in the state of Indiana use the BCA for spatial exception. Just a reminder that these utilities are not necessarily farming operations, obviously, and should not be permitted on property zone for agriculture without a hearing by the BZA. The BZA considers potential harm to aerial residents and before granting a special exception to zoning regulations. So once again, I would just encourage the county commissioners to make sure they follow the process that most counties do in the state of Indiana and to work with the BZA on this. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Anyone else? Jack Sheets, 9409 East, 1200 South, Gaston. 
I live on the county line, so I've been in uh, meetings for both Grant and Delaware County because I'm right there. Um, I just, I'm not sure exactly what your decisions in the solar ordinance involves. Can you explain to me what exactly you will be making the decisions on? Ultimately, this this commission enacts the ordinance. Okay. Right now, it's in the hands of the uh, area plan on what type of legislation they feel is necessary. That comes to us. We can adopt. We can send it back uh, for uh, re rewrite. But ultimately, we're the ones that enact that. any ordinance for the, the county when it comes to roads, streets, bridges, those types of things. Well, I just want to um, back up these guys when they're saying. So, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Linda Morgan, 10975 East 500 South Upland. Um, I'm not sure uh, if you guys will make a decision on tax abatements. Tax that, abatements go through the council. Okay. Um, uh, we saw a presentation on the solar farms, the possibility for Grant County. And one of the things was uh, how much tax income is going to come into the county and it's going to create jobs and so on and I I really before anybody gets starry-eyed about income and tax income um, just really look into what the reality is uh, the jobs that would be created uh, my understanding is after it's done they will have um, maybe two people for maintenance two people on the job and that most of the manufacturer not the manufacturing but most of the installation will be their trained people so that income is probably not going to stay in the county either and but with the but they promise a lot of tax income, and I don't know how they can do that. If they're gonna, they'll probably ask for a tax abatement. So just to be aware of that ahead of time. Thanks. Absolutely. Thank you. Anyone else? Case White. 8997 East, 750 South, Upland, Indiana. So uh, I'm sure you've been approached, or I know this is a big decision coming to Grand County, like another one, uh, farm from all the way from Upland, all the way to 332 in Muncie. So I've been in uh, numerous Muncie meetings, uh, seen sidestep situations, and now the county's kind of got a mess. Uh, I've spoke there. I understand the need for new energy. I just believe that we have to look in the areas where this new energy is going to go. Uh, as a farmer, uh, I've heard from the Grant County 101 a solar panel uh, presentation last week that just how much money these counties are getting. I've never heard uh, one thing how much the farmer pays to the local county. I do business in house, uh, Hertz, Co Alliance. We spend thousands of dollars there by local. Uh, as more farm grounds gobbled up, those local businesses are going to lose out on local money. And I think that needs to be taken into consideration. Uh, the lady spoke, I don't know if anybody watched that or was at that, but about 80,000 acres, there wasn't one, one farmer that was against. I just it's hard for me to believe that if I had 100 people and I give them all a $100 bill, one person's going to be upset why I didn't give them 200. 
That's the way we're wired as humans. Uh, just keep the farmer. She had mentioned that there was a, a way that uh, it gives us a way we're struggling as farmers. Uh, in Grant County, we had record crops this year. Uh, if you didn't make money this year, uh, maybe you ought to look at your business operation and maybe you're expanding too much. Uh, you've gobbled up so much ground that you're looking for income. And that's where I see solar kind of preying on uh, these avenues for guaranteed income. I just think that 35 years for a contract with not research out that long, that I believe Grant County is trying to take an avenue to look at this process and be more reserved and understand and make sure we do it right. I just want to make sure that it goes through every level. We make sure we're doing the best job we can. So thank you. Thank you, Jason. I believe you asked some questions last Monday night, didn't you? Yes, Over the internet? Yes, I did. Yeah, I, I couldn't be there in person. I, I had COVID timeout. I was exposed, so I couldn't be. You didn't want me to be there. <laughs> Good morning. Thank Good morning. you for having us meeting this morning. Appreciate it in the weather and all. I just recently have been informed of for, this for matter. The my name, name address. My name, first of all, is Dan Cates. I'm not one of the farmers. Uh, my address is 10151 South Strawtown Pike. I have a lot of questions in my mind uh, that I think need to be addressed and thought of. Uh, who gives the okay where the property of the location of the property that this solar equipment will be placed on. In other words, uh, do they just go out and say, I want this one. And, uh, uh, nobody, uh, they deal with whoever the property owner is. Is there no other authority anywhere that's going to say yay or nay? That's a concern I have. Um, and, I, and the size of the area of the project, are we are we talking about something that consists of, you know, it makes sense if you're going to need 20 acres, is it 10 two-acre plots or one 20-acre plot? I know construction-wise enough that it's going to be cheaper for the construction process to have it all at a location site, so many of the pieces of equipment can be located in that one compacted area. I, I, I do have some concerns, you know, this county and, and this country and this state, we have a lot of lands that right now, you know, there's no taxes collected on municipal areas where schools uh, religious uh, property, own, or, pardon me, property owned by churches, etc., counties, school, school ground. I see as I leave uh, Noblesville coming north on 37 there next to a bunch of motels, there's all of a sudden my land is a lot of uh, these panels are put in. Um, how it, it would assume I'm I'm questioning. Are we doing all this for solar cars? I don't know. Who, who's going to Who's going to need this? Is this really a an ice cream cone that's going to melt before it gets taken advantage? Uh, have we? Are we going to have one big site in the county, or are we going to have something closer to Sweetser, Swayze, Fairmount, Gas City, Mary? I assume that the need is greatest in those municipalities for power. Yeah, I have a light switch in my house, too. But that doesn't mean that these sites shouldn't be located closer to where they can deliver 
product they're producing, and they are going to be producing a product, no different than a farmer making income off of crops. These, somebody somewhere is going to get money. Um, I just think that uh, those are some thoughts that cross my mind, and uh, I, I'm a little concerned uh, that it's being handled and who is being handled by, I'd like to know more about. And I thank you for your time. I appreciate the thoughts. Thank you, Dan. Anyone else? Mark? Got, uh, I've got uh, Eric and I've got, was that you, Ryan? Yeah, I just, I wanted to make a suggestion to Dan. Uh, he can actually get on YouTube, Grant County Government, uh, and he can actually watch uh, Commissioner Solar Summit, the Solar 101, all of the workshops. And we also do have a copy, if he goes to our area plan webpage, uh, he can see a copy of the actual proposed solar ordinance. Uh, that should answer a lot of his questions. Okay, thank you for that. Eric? Um, I just wanted to follow up, and it sounds like maybe some of you attended the meeting last Monday at the Marion High School, and I know Ryan did. But for the ones that didn't, I just want to clarify one thing, and, and maybe it already is, but I want to reinstate it again. But don't let these solar farms or these solar companies come in and fool you by saying, well, farmers are already taking ground out of production anyway for CRP. That is true. That is true. My, my, my family farm, we do every farm, uh, we've got filter strips, waterways, and those are government programs, and they, the government pays us for that. But that's usually an acre or two per, per farm. So if it's a 120-acre farm, there might be three acres of waterways, filter strips, whatever. And yes, we do get paid by the government. It's a very low rate. But there's a reason why that's being done. We're trying to conserve the land, trying to make sure we aren't getting chemical runoff in those waterways. Um, so, you know, the lady that talked last week, I think she was from Lafayette, she said, well, you know, farmers take down 254,000 acres a year in the state of Indiana. Well, overall, that's a pretty low percentage of acres. But there's a reason why it's a less productive ground. It's not the most high productive ground. If you, if you were at that meeting, I went up and kind of challenged her a little bit on that. I wanted to make sure that she was not trying to compare apples to apples. because And, she's and not that's like, a federal program. Right, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. they want to make it sound like, well, farmers are doing this anyway. You know, they're all right taking farm ground out. And a lot of times these farmers maybe are retired farmers or don't have a child coming up through the farm operation. And a lot of cases, these farmers are farm owners. They may not even live in the state of Indiana. So don't let, um, and she put a lot of emphasis on farmers who are pro. <laughs> and I'm sure there are, but there are many that are not. So I just want to reiterate that. Thank you. All right, we're going in on almost an hour and a half. Anybody else want to share? Hi, Randy. And I guess I've been trying to protest uh, why it would not go wouldn't go as a special exception to BZA. And, and you said that you were going to have the lawyer look into that. I don't understand if that's been a past practice. Now, maybe I don't have a correct understanding of what the purpose of the BZA is, but why would we be asking a lawyer to, to give us a clarification on whether the BCA should have that or not? The, the, the clarification that we're getting from the attorney, we're still working on what is, is proper and right. The Board of Zoning Appeals is actually a quasi-judicial board that takes what the ordinance says and they govern or they, they make a ruling based on ordinances. They do, like the judicial branch, they don't tell the legislative branch, this is what you do. They act as a court. And so we're, we're making sure that we've got everything uh, right and proper in order for that to, to happen. So then who is the legislative branch? Legislative branch when it comes to this particular thing is the uh, area plan commission. Okay. They recommend recommend the, the, the action to the commissioners which enact it or change it. And would you follow the recommendation of the area planning commission? It depends on what kind of legislation they bring it to us. It's, it's that simple. 
there are some good things that have come out. There are some, we, we I believe we went round and round about this over uh, the uh, turbine, wind turbine uh, issue as well. And uh, finally had to uh, enact legislation and then we had contracts already with, I want to say Eon or Aon, something like that. And once those fell through, we were able to put a moratorium on that until we get it. We are forced right now in the state of Indiana, if we do not have legislation by the time that the legislation and le legislators, the Indianapolis Act, we will have a solar and wind power ordinance or statute out of the state that is much less restrictive than what we would consider here. I understand that. And, and so it's very important that we do it right. So what would not be included in the Area Planning Commission's proposal to you that would cause you not to go along with their proposal? I cannot, I can't speak hypothetically right now until I know what their final presentation is going to be. Okay. okay. And then I can't speak for Mike and I can't speak for Ron. Sure. Okay. And Ron sits on that commission, so he should be involved in that process. And I guess what I would ask that the commissioners, the Area Planning Commission, the BZA take into consideration is that you guys are in a position to make a long-term commitment to the Grant County residents for the next 35 years. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of us who won't be here then. So your decision is gonna impact generations to come. And just because we feel like we're under the gun here to get this done before the state, I would hope that we are looking at not only the pro that's being presented to us by the solar companies, but turn around and look at the impact that this will have on the residents to follow us. That's my concern. I would not want to step in your shoe today and make that decision, you know, without making sure that I've considered the negative aspect because right now it, it's, it's all positive propaganda that's being presented out here by the solar companies. Well, we, we really appreciate that, that vantage point and I, I can't tell you enough how much I appreciate the area plan and uh, Mr. Uh, Malik taking kind of the lead and saying, we've got to get this done. He started work on this. I, I, I the first time that you came and said, we've got to get this done. June, 2021. So he's been working on this and doing research and, and feeding area plan. And uh, so we're, we're hopeful that uh, and we so got to get it right. We have to get it right, because if we don't, the state will set this as a bottom line when we want it to be higher. Thank you. <laughs> Anybody else? One more thing, Linda Morgan. Um, I looked through some of the things that are uh, being added to the ordinance or changes, and there was one in there that someone had requested that they use panels that are not slave labor made. And I was just looking up a while ago, and there are. Um, panels being produced in the United States and I would like to make sure maybe you keep that in that would that might be something that you'd say well I'll get this um, Mark can I speak to that real quick for Linda yeah I think you were going to mention the uh, email you sent out today go right ahead uh, some of the research I've done is is when we get into United Laboratories, the UL listing, they actually, part of their listing, they have put forth in, with their company a non-slave labor, non-human trafficking. So most of the panels that we'll, we'll have coming in, hopefully all of the panels that we have come in, will actually have a UL listing on it already, which will ensure the non-slave labor and non-human tra trafficking. Uh, manufacturing of those panels just by seeing that stamp. And I, I sent that out to the APC, BZA, commissioners, everyone. Okay. I think that's it. Thank you. 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 Th
Makes me feel better. Good. <laughs> uh, just one thing you said that this meeting was an hour and a half. Grant or Delaware County Commissioner meeting started at 9 a.m. Uh, we got out at 2 o'clock last week. We, I, I could tell you, Jason, when it came to the uh, wind turbine stuff, we had some five, six hour yeah. meetings as well. So I understand that. Yeah. Sure do. All right. Anyone else? Uh, Denny Mormon, 9871 South, 700 East Paramount. Our concern. I live in the area where they're supposedly going to put the solar farms in. We only own an acre and two thirds, red, that's going to be on all four sides of us. And so we got a lot of concern on, you know, chemical runoff and different things that could happen. Property value is the biggest one. Is our property really going to tank once they get established? So those are the main reason we're here to listen. Thanks. Yes, sir. I think one of the things, that, and uh, I don't want to prolong this, but I think one of the things that the uh, area plan is looking at, and, uh, and Ryan has suggested, is that um, each individual complex uh, be treated individually, not as a whole blanket of, it's just this way for solar farms, but with each individual thing, there has to be a consideration for the environment, the, the residents around, so that I, I think you're kind of that say we need to protect our, our landowners. It's interesting dilemma, I think. I, obviously, I was on the council when we did the wind turbine process. You know, my stance normally is government should not do anything to individuals' property. That's the basic line until you start damaging somebody. If you do something on your property that hurts somebody else, that's when we step in and say, hmm, wait a minute here kind of thing. And some of those things, property values, you can see reports that go either way. And I haven't really studied this issue myself. And wind turbines, I did. This issue, I, in my position, I haven't really had to deal with that. But, but uh, you, you see reports that go support this side, you see reports that say this. And which, which one's correct? Gosh, who knows? I don't know, but I know that it's a difficult situation. And I personally, I just hope that we, uh, as people, can. I, I'll say make decisions that make sense for the general public, knowing that there's going to be opinions on either side. So you can't win totally, but you want to be reasonable somehow. How would you be want to be treated? Kind of thing. That's how you want to do it. You know, what would you want to expect to be treated like? As that decision is made, not easy to do sometimes. And I, this uh, revenue, the tax revenue that they're talking about. I haven't seen these numbers yet, but uh, taxation and how we collect money to fund local government is complex. Um, we Right now we get money from two sources basically to fund our local government, property taxes and the associated taxes with that and income taxes now, which the income tax didn't start coming in to us until 2009, that, or yeah, 2009 roughly. So we've made that change to include income taxes. So will this project add a, assess valuation is the key to get you know property tax money coming in. We'll add a, a, a assess valuation to bring money in. Well keep in mind the dollars we cut that we bring in are, are capped at a certain uh, a certain percentage of increase per year by the state and what's needed for debt service. So we, let's say uh, the formula lets us have, let's say, $10 million for the year. Well, we're not going to, even if there's more AV out there, it's not mean we're going to collect more money. It means the individuals that contribute to it will pay less if someone's paying some that they weren't before. So the how it's split becomes changed based on assessed valuation. That means we're going to get more money. Now, in the world that became more complex, the tax reforms that took place in 08 and 09, Currently, when we levy taxes to people, we don't get it all because the tax caps that are in place, the 1, 2, and 3% tax caps. So the AV that would be generated by these new dollars that come in for our project could make the loss of revenue better, you know, so we have less loss revenue. So it's, I guess my point is it's complex there. Then we're going to get more money from an individual. We may get less from some people, but in total it may go up because we'll lose less because of the tax caps. So there's that scenario to look at. 
income tax dollars. Uh, depends on where the person lives that works. If they live in Grant County, that's a January 1st every year, the income they make becomes part of the income tax, income tax dollars that fund our local government. If they live somewhere else outside of the county, doesn't help us at all. So that kind of matters. Where the person lives that work in those positions makes a difference. I, I guess my thought is, I just wanted to say, this is a complex situation. There's not a necessarily right or wrong answer. And I know it's the people that are gonna make those decisions. Hopefully they'll take all those factors and weigh it and make the decision that makes sense for us as the people. In this so we'll I mean, see. I may get some gray hair over this issue. What you might. <laughs> <laughs> I may lose a few more. I might probably lose more than I will. All right. Any other comments before we go into recess? Anything else, Mr. Burton? No. Hey, hey Mike, uh, don't hang up. We've got board of finance directly after this meeting. Okay. Or throw that out there. Thank you. All right. Yeah, we, will, we will declare the Grand County Board of Commissioners in recess. Our next meeting will be uh, February the 22nd. And Board of Finance uh, will meet here in about five minutes.